Hello everybody and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well and today we'll be talking about the box office preview for this weekend which sees the release of new films Uncharted and Dog uh, which don't really uh, pretend to uh, be able to <laughs> really shake up the market all that much but we also have confirmation that the Oscars still don't get it that Hollywood still does not understand as they attempt to boost Oscars ratings with three female hosts. And when I talk about who those hosts are, I'm sure many of you will say, oh boy, that makes me want to watch it. But before going any further into these bits of news, please make sure you smash that like button, light up the fire button if you're watching over on Odyssey, and also make sure that you are subscribed to the channel with that bell notification turned on. That way you know every time a new video or live stream goes live on the channel. So first, the box office news. Uncharted expected to come out to $30.7 million in its three-day opening. With it being President's Day weekend, it is expected to make $35.4 million by the end of that weekend. Remember that this is pretty much on track with the long-range <laughs> forecasting. I know, River, I know. Still doesn't mean that it's going to be that successful because, as I mentioned in the original coverage of the long-range domestic forecasting for this film, if this film's top end is only going to be 60 to $85 million domestically and it's not going to make much internationally, or at least uh, <laughs> if it doesn't at least double or triple this amount because of its high uh, production budget, uh, this film is set to be a massive financial failure. And yeah, this will be one of the few examples of financial failures for Sony in the last couple of years because they have been hitting it out of the park more recently with their films. But as you can see, Uncharted, uh, the original box office estimates that they had as of just about a week ago was somewhere between 25 and $35 million for their three-day opening. And that fits just in line with where it has it currently with its three-day opening being around 30.7. Dog expected to be a $9 million opening weekend. This coming from UA, a, lot, much, of, a much more lower budget film uh, compared to Uncharted, but uh, because of the fact that even if it costs 30, 40, 50 million dollars, I have not been able to uh, to double check the uh, the bu budget on Dog. I will have that in the full box office breakdown uh, for the weekend. Um, but what we can say for sure is that nine million dollars opening weekend, a film that likely will only do much domestically, uh, not a very good, uh, not a very strong showing really. Uh, when everything is said and done. Uncharted expected to come out at over 4,000 theaters, so a very high number there. Dog expected to come out at 3,000 theaters. Death in the Nile considered uh, only going to be dropping around 44%. I know. I know, River. I know she's still very upset because the writing for Death on the Nile is just, it's just not good. It's just not good, and she's very upset. She was really looking forward to Poirot's mustache. Spider-Man No Way Home, again, at 3,000 theaters, uh, only expected to drop 16%, so still making a boatload of money. Again, the question is, how close does this film get to $1.9 billion, potentially $2 billion? Who knows? Again, it is definitely slowing down. It is definitely not making as much in those foreign markets anymore as well, so uh, the prospects of it making the $2 billion mark still very low, but... It is indeed creeping higher and higher, and uh, again, just where hot, you know, just how high will it go? Jackass Forever still making some money as well. All that is being net gain, net profits at this point in time. But of course, big news is Uncharted because, as I mentioned, the 120 million dollar production budget for that film means that the film needs to make 300 million dollars worldwide to break even, which is quite a lot. And 30 million dollars domestically for your opening, not a very strong start. It has already opened in about 15 international marketplaces and. In its opening weekend, there, uh, it uh, I don't have the numbers here, but it did make around about 30, 20 to 30 million dollars in those markets. And so, again, doesn't seem like it's making a whole lot of money in the foreign marketplace. And so, it seems that this break even number is going to be out of reach. And so, Uncharted, very likely to be a box office flop. We'll know a lot more this weekend when we actually get not just the domestics, because the domestic probably won't be that far off from what we're seeing here from. Uh, box office pro the real question is going to be how much money does this film make internationally and uh is it going to be able to make up for basically the very much disinterested american audience in any of the international markets right now it does not seem to be the case in the markets that it has opened up into um, but we will of course be following that bit of news so the second bit of news that i actually just heard about this morning i was listening to uh the morning wire and as you can see being reported by the new york post this was from a couple days ago I was surprised and not surprised that this news made the rounds, but apparently the Oscars will indeed this year have three hosts. That's right, you heard it. They will have not only a host this year, but three hosts. 
And those three hosts are going to be Amy Schumer, Wanda Sykes, and Regina Hall. In an effort to boost ratings, they thought, in their infinite wisdom, the way to do that is to bring on the unfunny Amy Schumer, the sometimes funny Wanda Sykes, but very overtly political Wanda Sykes, and then Regina Hall, who can sometimes be funny, but again, not really three names you would think, ooh, these are really going to boost the ratings, these are really going to bring the people in. It doesn't make quite much sense to me. As it says here, the Oscars will make history this year with its host. Ah, yes, it's all about history. And I'm sure they'll be patting themselves on the back. They'll be saying, this is the first time ever we've had these women, these many women hosting the Oscars. And oh, man, look at the diversity on our on our stage right now. Ah, yes, diversity. So where are the men? Anyway, on Tuesday's Good Morning America, the Academy confirmed that Amy Schumer, Wanda Sykes, and Regina Hall would serve as the 2022's Master Ceremonies alongside the show's usual lineup of A-list award readers. And again, I'm sure it'll be as overtly political as ever, and people will continue to not watch it. We want people to get ready to have a good time. It's been a while, said Hall, Schumer, and Sykes. Sure. I'm not sure who thought this was a good idea, Schumer added, but I'm hosting the Oscars along with my good friend, Wanda Sykes, Regina Hall. I better go watch some movies. Yeah, I, I would actually agree with that first statement, Amy. I know that you were meaning that as a joke, but... I would say that's a factual statement. Yeah, I don't know who thought this would be a good idea. As it says, the, uh, the history-making decision marks the first time three women will ever host the ceremony. However, GMA noted that there were three hosts at the 1987 Academy Awards, Chevy Chase, Goldie Hawn, and Paul Hogan, and multiple women, the only t time there have been multiple women 45 years ago. At the 77 Awards, Ellen Bern uh, Bernstein, Jane Fonda, Warren Beatty, and Richard Pryor. Rotating cast of comedians was rumored to be in talks with the telecast producer Will Packer for weeks, according to Variety, up against the likes of John John Hamm and Pete Davidson. And you know what? I'm going to be honest here. Pete Davidson alone would be a bigger draw than the three people that you have chosen. And I say that unironically. I say that as a person who thinks that Pete Davidson is, is trash. <laughs> the fact is, though, people like him. There are people out there who like him. And I think that there are more people out there who like Pete Davidson than these three women combined. Because I honestly think that Amy Schumer almost brings a negative number to your party <laughs> these people have no idea they have no sense of self-awareness it's insane they think hey our ratings have been so terrible could it be because we keep nominating a bunch of films that that are are all about uh oh the prestige of the oscars and the political messaging that we have been so obsessed with especially the last several years oh oh i know i know how we're gonna solve that problem no river's very upset by this she's like i could have been a host i would have bought in so many more ratings just for my fun commentary i know river you would have been a great host but they thought to themselves yeah the way that we fix the problem is by perpetuating and continuing the identity politics problem that has been weighing down the oscars for years now ah <sighs> oh, i know sheer, sheer hubris river Sheer hubris. But anyway, just wanted to talk about that bit of news. I saw that this was talking, uh, breaking this morning. Uh, so what are y'all's thoughts about these? Do you think that these three women are going to, by making history, be able to bring in those record-breaking numbers? I think it probably will be one of the lowest-watched <laughs> one of the lowest watched Oscars of all time. Because, again, Hollywood continues to not realize that they have lost touch with reality. They have lost touch with the audience. The Oscars used to mean something. We used to say, hey, that was a Best Picture winner at the Oscars. Now, means very little. As you can tell, River and Willow, very upset. Because they know, they remember. Well, really, well, actually, probably they don't because they're only a few years old. But, hey, they, they think they remember when the Oscars were good. But it is in quite a long time. But anyway, what else thoughts about that bit of news? Do you think it's going to save the Oscars? And also, what are your thoughts about Uncharted? Do you think that Uncharted is going to... Break the charts! Again, I think there's a lot of jokes that can be made with a film with the title of the name Uncharted. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see exactly how on or off the charts this film ends up being. Again, domestically, doesn't really look like there's going to be a whole lot going on there for a $300 million break-even point movie. But, hey, who knows? Maybe it'll do well internationally. We'll have to wait for those numbers to come in. But what are y'all's thoughts about this? And anything else I mentioned, let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, smash that like button. Love that fire button. Really does mean a lot. You're all amazing and beautiful people. River, you, you, river, 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 I know, I know, calm down, thank you for being patient with me, anyway, you guys are amazing, beautiful people, have a wonderful rest of your day, and as always, God bless.
And now for a huge shout out to all of my Patreon subscribe star and locals members, starting off with Patreon animation commentator, Brandon, let's go Brandon, Brian P, Christopher Bowman, Father Christopher Miller, hail to you father, Father Damian Cook, Fuzz Aldrin, Garrett Searles, Hannibal Grimm, Harold Francis, Hymir Ari Hymason, Inflamed Wood, Jacob Juice, Jeffrey Toon, Joe Horn, Jonathan Carney, Gomer Kyles 79, Laura, the Modern Major General's Story, Mike Jackson, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mondo Spieler, Mr. Peabody, On to June, Orange Chat Reviews, Out of Step with Reality, Priscilla Hall, Rosetta Owen, Stan Andrian, Teresa Martin, or Miss Martin Muses, Theodore Benden, Tina Bojan, and... Tina B, the Empress of the Universe. Thank you very much for supporting me over on Patreon. Also to my subscribe star peeps, UAB Mad Dog, which is Mr. Mike Jackson, Storm Tracker, The R, Fast Reaction, Nosferatu Gatsu, Stand For, John B, Mr. Roy, Glinzer, J. Alex McCarthy Jr., Dean Heiss, Slash, the new number two, J. Rod, the Beer Guru, and ZK Man. Thank you all very much for supporting me over on the Subscribe Star platform. And to my three local supporters, we got Kara Tharp, UAB Mad Dog, which is once again Mike Jackson, super supporter over there, and Robert Barnes. Thank you very much for supporting me over on the Locals platform. And if you want your name shouted out at the end of every live stream, and video, please think about signing up on either of those platforms. You can find a link in the description below that will lead you to all of those different pages. It is known as the Willow link, as it is W.LO link, and it will have all the links to that, to the Discord channel, to all different kinds of places, including places to support me as well. At the Citizen of Asgardian level, you get Citizen of Asgardian levels, how it's labeled on Patreon. Still need to fix that, but Citizen of Asgard level, you get a shout out at the end of every live stream and video. If you join at the Army of Asgard level, you also access to a giveaways channel, which is featured on the Discord that I have. I know, River, it is very exciting. It is so exciting where you get giveaways for things like 4K titles, steelbook titles, etc. Uh, again, I got some 4K uh, steelbooks of The Punisher, for instance. I've got 4Ks of tons of other movies, so I'm giving those away all the time. So if that sounds interesting to you, interesting to you join the Army of Asgard level. Also, at the Keep of the Bifrost level, you get all of that stuff. Plus, you get access to a once a month and maybe twice a month. We're trying to work on trying to add an extra podcast in there of me and John the Flick Pick Flickinger, where we talk about movies. And also, you get to ask your questions. Questions. Any questions that you want to ask, you get to ask with that podcast. And then you have the Chosen of Valhalla level, which is you access to all of those. And also a once a month podcast where you get to be featured with me on the main channel. We all get to talk together about movies, culture, pop culture, anything really that the Chosen want to talk about or anything the Chosen wants to promote is on the table. So if you like that, if you like that, join at the Chosen of Valhalla level. Also, during your first month of support, you get a free T-shirt. Any T-shirt that you want from the main store, you get access to. And I do ship internationally anywhere in the world. Anyway, you guys are all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless.